Ludger Bedard Consulting Private Detective. The world is the planet Earth and all life upon it, including human civilization. In a philosophical context, the world is the whole of the physical universe. If you go to bed at night without learning something new that day, your day is not complete. Ludger Bedard 1411, London 1590s. London 1590s. Europe in the 1590s was on the cusp of great change. In the latter half of the decade, a series of treaties finally ended religious warfare that had plagued France, the Low Countries, England, and Spain for decades. In England, an aging, childless queen fanned the anxieties of her councillors and her people, as they wondered who would lead them next. Amongst European powers, like the Netherlands, England, Spain, and Portugal, Commercial competition fueled a nascent proto-industrial, globalized economy. As each decade sees its regressions and advancements, glories and an anticipated strife, the 16th century came to a close at the front steps of the modern world. Early modern London was an expanding metropolis filled with diverse life, from courtiers, merchants and artisans to prostitutes, beggars and cat purses. Its populace of roughly 100,000 people included royalty, nobility, merchants, artisans, laborers, actors, beggars, thieves, and spies, as well as refugees from political and religious persecution on the continent. England's budding economy, merchants from the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, and even further afield set up shop in London. As a result, Londoners would hear a variety of accents and languages as they strolled about the city, a chorus of voices from across Europe and from all walks of life. Though royalty, the court, and aristocrats may have been the most visible members of London society, a large portion of early modern London's population worked for a living. The city's tradesmen, artificers, merchants and manufacturers may claim much of the credit for London's growth. Technological advances made it possible to churn out pamphlets, sermons, plays, poems, proclamations, diatribes, and jeremiads at a tremendous rate. Booksellers took these varied materials and made them available to patrons from across London, nobility, wealthy bourgeois, artisans and even the literate poor. Although anyone who had some level of trade, craft, or artisanal skill could make a life in London, one obstacle they faced was the guild system, a holdover from a medieval mode of organizing and regulating labor. Guilds had provided valuable social and commercial structure, establishing hierarchies, from apprentice to master, based on experience and skill level. They also provided a means of excluding undesirable members. If for some reason a London tradesman fell into disfavor in a guild, he could be censured or even expelled. Such exclusion could have drastic consequences, plunging the hapless tradesman into poverty, which, in London, was a serious predicament. Early modern London was a bad place to be poor. 